everybody. So I'm inspired to share, share on the idea of our brother, the concept of our brother, and how our brother is our savior. Our brother can be very helpful. Our aim in the spiritual journey is to remember, come back to the truth of who we are, our true identity, which is one, which is spirit, which is all-inclusive. But if we have an experience or a perception of our brother being separate than us or think that there are other people out there, then we, we've got mind training to do. We, we've got work to do to heal the mind. And so our brother can serve in this purpose, provided we give our relationships this purpose. Because the purpose will serve one of two, one of two thought systems. If it's serving the ego thought system, then our brother is going to perpetuate the idea of separation. In which case, we will find reasons to blame our brother. We will find that our brother is cause of our upsets. And this happens. We all, we've all experienced it, whether it's upsets in the family, spouse, and so forth. Believing that our brother is separate from us, he now becomes the cause, the projection of our guilt. And this is all serving the ego's purpose, which would be perpetuating the feeling and the experience of separation, which is basically suffering. But given the purpose that the Holy Spirit would give, which is the purpose to heal and come back to truth, come back to the oneness, come back to spirit identity, then our brother serves a different purpose and he shows us where we're stuck. The aim being that we experience ourselves as one, the aim being that we experience peace, perfect peace and truth, and that we live and abide or bind ourselves to the laws of spirit, which are eternal. That's what we want. And so our brother is going to show us where we're stuck because it is the beliefs, the judgments, the assumptions, the conclusions that we have that make for the experience of separation. And these beliefs, judgments, conclusions, and assumptions that we have typically hide beneath our conscious awareness. We're not aware of them. They typically surprise us. Something happens unexpectedly, we get upset, you know, our brother is late, or our brother does something annoying, you know, our spouse, you know, our spouse cheats on us, or the spouse lies to us, you know, or our brother dies, death. I mean, there's so many different things that the ego would attach to to make our brother seem to be the cause of upset. And so with our aim being to come home, to come back to truth, then we need to see what those thoughts and beliefs that we still hold are. The thoughts of vulnerability, the thoughts of fear, the thoughts of what we think others should be like for us to be happy, the thoughts that our happiness is dependent on the behavior of others. We need to see that so that we can give it up, so that we can be willing to say, okay, this belief does not serve anymore. So I'm willing to give this up. But you can't get to that place unless you see it. And so our brother is our savior in the sense that he helps us see it. Of course, the miracle says, don't deny the message of relief your brother offers you now. The message of relief is a message of release. Release all that has served to keep the separation going. Your brother's here to highlight it for you. 
And so when your brother seems to act or behave or do something that seemingly hurts or that gets us charged, what's actually happening is that he or she is highlighting where we're stuck, where we still believe we're vulnerable. And we need to look at it, where we still believe we are separate, where we're still holding on to a concept. where we are still binding ourselves to the laws of the ego, the physical laws of this world, to time and space. And that's beautiful. Our brother now, now is given that purpose, our brother can be seen as beautiful. Our perception of our brother changes because we see he's us helping us. And because we share the same purpose, which is to be happy, even if he or she is not spiritual or not on a mind training program, that really doesn't matter because he or she is never really separate from us anyway. We accept the atonement for ourselves. We're accepting the correction for ourselves. And in, in, in accepting the correction for ourselves, we are now aligning with the laws of spirit, which are beyond and not bound to time and space. So this is the realm of miracles now. And so from this place, then our, our brother is healed with us, regardless of what's seemingly happening with our brother in the realm of time and space, whether or not we become witness to it. Our forgiveness or our willingness to forgive is really a willingness to forgive for us. It's a call to love, not a call necessarily to love for the, for the person or the person's actions. It's a call for love for us. It is a call back. It's calling the mind back from an experience of separation, of division, to an experience of oneness, to love. There's relief in that. That is the message of relief that is offered to us each and every time we find ourselves charged or in a situation of suffering. Regardless of what the images look like, regardless of what it looks like in terms of form, regardless of what the thoughts are saying, And if we listen to the thoughts, then we're listening to the ego. We're listening and following the ego's purpose for our brother or how he would use our brother, which is to sustain the sense of separation. But we're beyond that. We want more than that. We want peace. And so we now see that our brother can be used differently. And it doesn't mean that upsets won't come up. They welcome upsets because they're just... Um, yeah, they're just giving us the opportunity to go deeper into the mind, giving us the opportunity to embody the miracle yet again, to live in the forgiveness yet again. So the next time you feel stressed or angry or feel like your brother has caused harm, remember there's a message that he's offering. There's a message of relief that he's offering. 